The Yokai Watch event has finally begun, so let's get right into what rewards you can earn and how you're going to go about earning them. So in terms of rewards, there are going to be a total of 18 different minions, one representing each of the jobs in the game, and then a total of 18 different weapons, one for each of the different jobs in the game. These will also, when you unlock 13 minions, get you a Whisper Go mount, and then you get a Whisper A Go Go when you have 13 weapons. And then finally, if you complete 17 yokai weapons, you get a Jimbin Yan couch. With rewards out of the way, let's talk about how you're going to earn them. So quick note from editing after recording is that I just came across a spreadsheet on Google Sheets made by the Reddit user JCNV. And so definitely check that out. I am going to actually have a link to that in the description. I think that this is going to be really helpful for people to follow just to keep track because there is so much going on. Anyhow. Back to the video, and sorry, I just wanted to throw this right at the start because I, I know that I missed it earlier, but this is really useful. So first of all, you need to unlock the quest, which is going to require you go to Ulda, the Steps of Null, and talk to a poor healed youth that's going to lead you through a series of quests, and finally, eventually, land you in Golden Saucer, where you're going to be talking to the Nohi NPC just outside of the main Gold Saucer desk. Nohi is where you're going to be trading in your medals, whether they're for weapons or minions, for weapons or minions. And likewise, he's going to give you your first minion after you complete your first fate. However, I have gone ahead of myself, because before you get to the point where you can start trading in medals or earning medals, you need to make sure that he gave you, by the end of that quest chain, a special particular bracelet item. And it is very important well, mandatory, that you have this bracelet on whenever you're completing fates in order to earn these medals that you can trade in for the minions and the weapons. Your first minion is only going to cost one medal, and so you can get it right off the bat. And then every minion after that's going to cost you a total of three medals, meaning that in total it's going to cost you 52 different medals or 52 fates in order to get all of the minions through this event. However, like alluded to earlier in the video, each of these minions is reflective of a particular job in this game, such as Jimbin Yan reflects the warrior, and whenever you have this minion out, and you do need the minion out, I should say very clearly, you will be able to earn, in particular locations, very specific metals that you can then trade in for a particular weapon type. Such as, for the Jimbin Yan, if you go to the Central Shroud map and then you do a whole bunch of fates there with the Jimbin Yan minion out, you can then earn 5 or however many medals you'll need, which is going to be 10 for every other weapon after your first, and then you can basically just earn these medals, trade them in for the weapon. So the real trick of this is that you need to make sure that not only is the right minion out, but you're also farming on the right map, and so likewise there is a table provided to us that is going to be able to show us exactly what is going on that is shown on the screen right now. So really, once you have the right minion out and you're on the right map, just go and start grinding fates over and over again, and then you're going to be collecting medals. I will say, however, that I have noticed for the specific legendary metal that there is a large RNG component to it because I have gone many, many fates without getting one of the legendary metals. And so I can't really tell you how many fates you're going to need to grind, but it is definitely going to be quite a few. Likewise, this leads me to have to suggest to everyone do look up different groups in the party finder and see if you can get a group through this because that's going to make things a lot easier. Another suggestion that I can make is try and blee as a blue mage. Try and blee as a blue mage, oh god. And basically that's just because the blue mage just comes with so much damage out of the gate and so many different abilities that honestly in my experience I've blown through the content of the fates really quickly. What Some of my favorite abilities include just the Ravana, just whatever you call it, the Kamehameha, just wave after wave after wave. It, it mows down AoE packs super quick. Anyhow, that is all for this video, and happy grinding. I tried to keep this one short. <laughs> and as always, any likes and subscribes are incredibly appreciated. As a smaller content creator, I can't say just how much everything matters and how much the support really means to me. Thank you so much. Anyhow, that is all for this one. Take care, and happy grinding. I said that twice, oh no. <laughs> Take care.